So I decided to uh, start a sort of a different add-on or, or spin-off to the Common Rule podcast. And uh, with my genius brain here of the criminal minds of the 21st century, <laughs> I decided to uh, call it uh, TCR Visual. And that stands for the Common Rule Visual. Uh, which essentially means it's going to be me talking over a bunch of photographs or videos that I've taken along the way and just something to do, something different. Now, the last few weeks, I've been going through my archive, as I stated on the podcast, and uh, I've done, I've finally done something that I thought would, I wouldn't do anytime soon, but because of the downtime that I had, I finally finished. I've gone through every single significant show that I have at my disposal that I've ever shot, edited it, edited it, and uploaded it to my site. They are there. They're ready to go. The music archive is up and running. And man, that was something else. I did that with my models too, but for some reason it took a little extra work doing it with my music photography, which is, I have no idea why. Uh, the models was easier, but there was just maybe twice or even three times as many photographs to get through. So that was, uh, kind of funny the way that the uh, time worked out on that. Anyway, they're all done and uploaded. I am missing a couple of shows and I have no idea where they're at. I, they're either in some external drives, which I thought I backed up entirely, or they could be in a hard drive. They got stolen a few years ago when, uh, the storage room that I had the computer in got broken into the glass. It used to have like a glass side wall and they finally broke it and uh, they took my computer and an old camera that I had for a long time and uh, that's sad. Anyway, I did as much as I could. Now, one of the reasons that it took longer than usual is because of my eye. Uh, some of you may or may not know if you follow the podcast, I'm going to bore you yet again is the uh, my eyeball i i went blind in one eye and i had surgery and it's slowly but sur surely slowly but surely recuperating but i still can't it's still not usable and it's really a pain in the ass and i i and one thing that i figured out after all this is i'm going to need an eye patch and really uh cover it up so that i can actually start doing my day job uh soon pretty soon here uh the uh, the, the problem with my eyeball, man, is this today I've missed out on a few things. This summer has not gone the way that I wanted to. I'm, I'm going to bitch and moan for a second, but, uh, don't worry. It's not going to be the whole thing. <laughs> and, uh, it, it's just, uh, by this time I was hoping to do a bunch of things and drive around a lot more, go down South, explore Baja a little bit more. Some of you know, I, I live in, in Mexico now. And it is, uh, it hasn't panned out. I haven't been able, I got surgery, as a matter of fact, about um, almost exactly a month ago to the day. And it's just been, uh, and before that, it was about two weeks, about a week that I went blind in the eye. So it really is, uh, I haven't been able to do anything the past month. And uh, it's been frustrating. So I've been, I mean, today, as a matter of fact, I, uh, there was a, a friend is visiting from Europe that I hadn't seen in forever and she's in town with my buddy and I just, and I missed out because I can't drive over there. And at the moment, uh, the budget isn't allowing me to, uh, take a taxi at the moment, even though the taxis are very inexpensive here and the Uber is very inexpensive. The, uh, it's still the, the medicine that I had to buy for these eye surgeries is really, the eye drops are ridiculous in price, even for Mexico, but man, okay, whatever. So I'm budgeting for that, uh, that I'm going to need a couple more bottles here this week. So I'm like, anyway, long story short to bore you. It's been, uh, it's been a progress trying to get things done with just one eye. But hey, man, I uh, the the archive is up and running, and I'm I'm really excited about it. the The premise, besides, or the idea behind the, these TCR notes, is just to kind of use the podcast as a spinoff point 
and use my photography as examples uh, and talk about the photography and, and how I got, uh, you know, how I got the shot and maybe a more technical and boring aspect, but at the same time, uh, maybe fun little backstories that happen along the way with these uh, pictures. I mean, there's a, there's a few stories in there. I don't, I'm not like a crazy photographer that got these crazy, you know, stories. I'm not Annie Leibovitz on tour with the fucking Rolling Stones. I'm sure she's got a shitload of crazy stories she can't talk about, you know? Even, uh, uh, Kappa, um, no, Frank, the guy who did the Americans followed, uh, the Rolling Stones around and he made the, a documentary, uh, called Cocksucker Blues. And it was an all access pass that Robert Frank got to the Rolling Stones. And apparently, there are some very delicate situations in that documentary to where the Rolling Stones actually took Kappa to court. And while they didn't, not Kappa, Frank, the, while they didn't, um, while they didn't completely take the rights away from him, they figured out a deal to where he can only show the documentary if either one of the Rolling Stones is in the theater or he's in the theater. And it can only be shown in theaters. And it, it just it's some weird thing to where, as of today, there are no legal copies, digital legal copies that I know of. Or even VHS tapes. You can only, it's only on film as far as I know. Um, I might uh, be incorrect as of today. But uh, yeah, it's, he's, you still have to go to the theater and the photographer has to be present in the audience watching it with you in order for that to be legal. Uh, so it's a weird situation. But man, I am, in one sense, I'm dying to see what happened. But in the other sense, I don't want to see something. I mean, the Rolling Stones did a lot of crazy shit, and, you know, obviously all these other super rock bands were known for doing crazy shit, but there must be something really, really bad on there that the Stones are like, man, we don't want that out in the, to the general public to see what we were doing. I have a couple ideas of what it is that they're doing, but, man, they're, they're just ideas. I don't, I don't know for sure what's going on, and maybe I don't want to know what's going on, so... <laughs> hey man it was the uh at that point i think it was the 70s and man they were they were crazy all right so you know i, I don't have stories like that um they were the the stories that i have are just fun and, and uh family type stories and even the stories that i can't tell i probably don't remember and they're probably fuzzy at most when i went on tour with transfer i was it was just Man, I was, uh, well, I did my job as a documentarian, if you will, with photographs and video. By the time I was supposed to do my second job, which was being a roadie and helping them out, I was a complete mess and, uh, <laughs> useless. I, there's a couple of shows that I know I didn't do a goddamn thing because I don't remember shit until the next morning. And I think some of it started off in, uh, right off the bat, off the first show in Tucson. Albuquerque was a blur. Uh, Dallas, I don't know what the hell happened in Dallas after the show. And man, it was uh, most of Texas. I remember most of Austin was um, was awesome. But yeah, the uh, those are, there's a couple of cities in there where I'm really thinking that I'm the fucking rock star and fucking getting shit done, you know. Or <laughs> anyway. The, this first set that I did here to get into this uh, technical aspect, I wanted to talk about a couple of things here, actually. Uh, this first set is just a bunch of photographs that I took of Bob Logger III. And there's one more show here that I, that I cannot find. I know I, take, I know I went to four shows. And it's, uh, it's not possible that I went to a show and didn't take my camera. Uh, all the shows that I went to to see Bob Logger III were awesome and you know what's funny is they, they were all a couple of them not all of them a couple of them were right around my birthday every year so when bob law came to town it was it was a cool festive event and i didn't care if i went by myself or with or with somebody so i was there taking pictures and having a great time 
And what I loved about Bob Blog the Third, or what I still love about Bob Blog the Third, besides his music and just stage presence and just uh, just his, his show in general, I think a you know probably the best rock show I've ever seen. And you guys know I love certain bands. I love Pearl Jam. I love uh, shit. I love Jimi Hendrix and seen some of his shows on video. But I think the best show I've ever seen is still the Flaming Lips. And I'll talk about that later on. But the Flaming Lips put on an amazing show. And I don't think we even caught, when I saw them at the Del Mar Fair, they were basically playing, the Del Mar Fair every once in a while does these, and I don't know if they're going to do it this year, but it's something like Friday night something. And on Fridays, they start the races later. And they, after the races, they'll have a band playing. In this particular case, it was the Flaming Lips, and it coincided with some sort of beer fest that they had there. So, man, it was crazy. And but the while the the show again is probably the best show I've ever seen with their props, with uh, Wayne going out in his ball in the crowd. He's, he he steps into these big. I've only seen him in like Jackie Chan movies where I don't and, where you get into it. And you run around and stuff. Well, he gets into it and he runs on top of the crowd and it's amazing. I mean, there is confetti everywhere. People in panda costumes running around and people singing along. It really was an amazing show. Uh, the And even then, uh, because of the time constraints that there were after the show and stuff like that, I bet that the show is even better. I heard that they basically play... I think Dark Side of the Moon front to back or one of the uh, Pink Floyd albums. I'm pretty sure it's, it's Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, they play that front to back like on New Year's uh, after their show or, to, in that, or combined with one of their shows. I can't wait to see that. I think I got to get back to Oklahoma City to do that. But I'm, you know, like I said, the, the, the Flaming, Licks put on, <laughs> Flaming Lips put on a great show. But Bob Log, what I really like, uh, aside from his showmanship, is that he, I think he plays anywhere. And from what I've seen, he's played dive bars, which is Rips and Chopper Johns, where the crowd is very intimate. Maybe there is a hundred people in the crowd at most. And he plays places uh, like the Crescent Ballroom, which will fit probably 500 people. Maybe, yeah, about 500 people. Maybe a little more or less. I don't know. You have to check me on that. Maybe 750 on a good night. I'm not sure. And he'll pack at whatever size venue that I've seen him in. And it, it's, uh, again, a very awesome show. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a spectacular show. And, of course, he goes when he goes out to Europe and Australia, he plays these huge festivals with tons of people. I'm sure he's not the headliner, but still, it must be nice to play in front of all those people and rock them faces and start melting some faces with some crazy uh, blues guitar on steroids. Uh, the the shows that I'm looking at here are uh, the it's a combination of uh, a show at at Rips, which is a great dive bar in in Phoenix. It's a uh, more of a rockabilly style bar, but uh, a, a lot of people, a lot of different people go in there, but it seems to be very heavily into the rockabilly stuff. But punk bands played in there, uh, rockabilly bands, of course, played in there. Bob Log the Third plays in there. Uh, they'll have a DJ every once in a while, and uh, it's a great, it's really a great place to get cheap drinks. And it's what I like about it is that it's a safe dive bar. Uh, everybody in there was cool. Nothing is um uh really dangerous there's really it's it's one of these safe dive bars and chopper johns is also another dive bar like that and it's a credit to the people that go in there and have a great time in phoenix and it's it's hard to find dive bars like that where you usually go into a dive bar and it's seedy as fuck and you don't want to get to know the people you don't know what the fuck's going on and you know what fuck this place i'm never coming back sort of thing if you guys ever find yourself i don't even know if it's still open Back in the days when I used to live in Lakeside, there was this shitty bar called the Sierra Club or the High Sierra Club. I don't even remember. But it's one of these low ceiling bars that is, oh my God, it's absolutely fucking uh, trash. And I never go back in there. 
there's another bar in Phoenix on McDowell called The Wanderer or, or something like that on 36th Street and Mc, or 30, yeah, 36th Street and McDowell, something like that. Yeah, don't go in there. That place is trash too. Uh, but Rips is great. Chopper John's is great. And of course, the, uh, the, the, the Crescent Ballroom is a very, very cool place. Uh, the, again, great people all the time going in there and a great mix of people. Uh, and everyone's there to have a great time. Uh, these, one of the things that I did want to bring out, uh, bring up about this set is that it is a combination of uh, the, my little, uh, digital G15 camera, point and shoot camera, which is amazing. Uh, it's a camera that I recommended back when it was semi new. Uh, at that time, there was probably the another generation or two ahead of it, but uh, this camera is still was still awesome at that time. It's only 12 megapixels, but it shoots video, a little bit of video, 1080p. Uh, but it is still a very legit camera to carry around. It's relatively pocket size and i i love the low light setting on that it's pretty nice at 1600 it shoots a great it, it shoots a great image i don't mind these things where people start reviewing cameras and start talking about noise and cameras and when an image becomes unusable i look at them and i'm i laugh i mean that's absolutely ridiculous why would you say that because it has a little grain it's unusable 90% of the time of the day, people don't even print their pictures. And even if they did, uh, it's if it's unusable, it's mostly to do uh, because of user error. And, and I'll bring up uh, a point about the cellular shooting with the cell phone because that's uh, I some of these pictures I shot with a cell phone as well. Uh, of course, we look at the majority of these pictures were shot on film. Uh, and you, when I go out to dive bars and when I go out to uh, just shady sort of places, I take an old Nikon that's from the 60s. The one I have, I think, was made in 1968. It's called a, a Nikker mat. Got to be careful with that word. I-N-N or Nikker mat. I-N-I-K-K-O-R-M-A-T. And it's an F-N and it's a great camera, and you can still basically put... The great thing about Nikons is that you can switch out lenses through the generations from that lens to you can put that lens on a digital camera body that Nikon makes now. And it's a beautiful manual lens, and it's great. The one I usually shoot with here is uh, the 50 millimeter, which opens up to two. And man, it's, it's, a, great, it's a great lens. The only bad part about this uh situation here is uh i the lens or the camera does have uh you got to put a little battery in it it does have um uh an exposure meter on it but what happens is when as the night grows and i start to drink and i start to uh you know get a little bit of bourbon and high life in me I uh, I just mess around with the buttons and I kind of forget where I'm at. I, I, because the light is very on him and there's a spotlight on him that is very weak most of the time at these dive bars. The lighting in, in dive bars is terrible. And I decided to give up using flash photography in a lot of instances uh, just because I think it bothers the the musician more than anything else and i think it takes away from the experience and the problem is is that i love to take photo a lot of photographs i like to go snap 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 and what you'll see in some of the other uh, uh, uh sets that i talk about is that i have a ton of photographs and what's funny is before I didn't know what to do with so many photographs, and now I finally figure out what I want to do with it, and it's basically if I put them on a super hyperlapse, uh, they look pretty cool, and it looks like a, a cool little video, and, and so I'm going to start doing a bunch of those set to the music of whatever band I shot at that time, and I've uploaded a couple of those already on Instagram and on, uh, on, my, uh, on my YouTube uh, but again, see, these were shot on film. Now, what happens is these. this is all very low light setting. And what happens a lot of the time is I have to, when I use the lens at F, wide open at F2. And the 
shutter speed is anywhere from a 30th to a 15th of a second. So you'll see a lot of blur in some of these. And in some cases, I just really get to the point where I really push the film in some instances and shoot it at 60th. Now, a lot of this film is uh, 400. And man, when I was going through my archive, Fuji made this amazing film, the 1600 film. And Kodak makes a low light film too. It makes a 3200. The problem with the 3200 is that it, at that time, my I preferred actually pushing the Fuji film to 3200 than actually shooting that Kodak at box speed. It seemed like it was just an overall better. Uh, you, I wanted to push the Kodak to 6400, but at 6200, I think that was its limit anyway. So Fuji. Man, I just, somewhere, hopefully the formula to those films is still sitting around somewhere and somebody brings them back because that was my favorite film, black and white film, any film. And Fuji made another great film, the the Provia uh, 400X. Wow, man, I used to push that to 3200 and I'll show some images of that too. And it, it was just a great color film that I just loved. It, it was a slide film which shot really well in low light situations to push. Uh, the problem with that now is that even if they did bring back that slide film, I am not sure that there are going to be many processing labs that would know how to push that film properly and give me the good results that I had back in the day when I had it processed in San Diego somewhere. Uh, the black and white stuff, of course, I, I process at my house. Uh, I stand process with Rod and all. And, uh, you know, it, I love the results of that. And it's it's pennies on the dollars uh, compared to taking it to anywhere and getting it processed there. Now, it, of course, this film that I'm using is... Uh, it's It's a great film. I love it. But it's not the best. It's not... It's definitely not Tri-X, uh, not HP, um, anything. I, some of you like HP Plus, and I like HP 5. Uh, what was the other one? I, I'm having a brain fart right now. But HP, I prefer HP 5. It seems like I get better blacks than I do with the, um, with the other one. Uh, but uh, this Ultrafine, and th th there's another one called, um, uh, I'll remember, Kentmar or Kentmere. And those are, these films are, are fine. They're, they're fine. If you want to shoot film, black and white, and take advantage of the lenses, because that's really the magic of film is the lenses, especially when you get to medium format and large format. Uh, that's why you should film, because digital still doesn't have the medium format look. You can, I mean, you can manipulate it in Photoshop, if you will, but there's something really cool about shooting a film on medium format. And we'll get into those later when I'll show some medium format portraits that I did some of these bands. But my point, going back to the grain and unusable images, I'm using all these fucking images, as you can see. And some of them are, you know, questionable, maybe push the limits of uh, self-expression and artistic sensibility, if you will. But these, uh, uh, they're completely usable. They're dirty. This is why I shoot film. I love the dirt, the grain. Uh, by the way, I don't really fuck up the, uh, the negative. I've mentioned this before, but I want to mention it again. The dirt in the green actually comes from the, uh, negative saber. I put all my negatives into the saber and then I scan them with that. That's what gives it the look that it gets. Uh, the negatives are just fine. Don't worry about that. So I can pull them out and scan them correctly and they wouldn't have as much dirt on them. I recommend that to anybody looking to scan that way anyway. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the film is being pushed, I think pretty much to its limits. I've never pushed the, uh, this 400 to 3200, uh, uh, shooting it at, at 1600 is, is, I like it very much and it's pretty good. I don't see a very big difference between 400 and 1600 here. Uh, it, it's, I don't know. I, I really don't. The, the way that the film is set up, it's not. It's good film, but it's not the best film. So I don't, I don't think I miss much by shooting it at box speed and pushing it anyway. So uh, if I wanted to shoot something with really fine grain, trust me, I wouldn't be using this film. I'd be using something at a hundred speed or or um, or fifty speed. So um, take that for what you will. Uh, again, 
this film, I'm pushing the hell out of it. And there's really not much range to it. It's either black or it's white. And I that's, you know, sort of the look you want to get in my situation or what I want to get on this. I'm not looking to get detail from the curtain or get detail from any sort of shadow. I just want to see Bob Log the third there and doing and isolate him for mo- the most part. Now, the most of the color ones that are shot are shot on a phone and i believe i was using the galaxy x6 at the time don't or s8 uh don't quote me on that but it's one of those i believe it was the eight and it took a it's great low light camera uh and as you can see it's got way more range than the film that i'm using and what i wanted to bring up about this is this is these are all one usable images. I don't care too much about the grain at all. And I want you guys to know that from this set, I actually printed out a huge oversized um, uh, 30 by 40 print uh, that I have, and it prints out perfectly nice. Uh, it, It depends on the printer and who's printing it and who knows how to work that printer. Trust me, you can get a really good image, and this thing about being usable or not usable, again, I don't, I don't understand it. Uh, maybe their camera's not working, maybe they don't know how to process it, but uh, I'm looking at uh, these images, they're all great. And they, I, there's a, there's a, there is a line, though. If you're talking about getting a, um, a, an unusable image because there's a lot of, Noise, and I guess the difference is between digital and film is grain equals noise, noise equals grain, right? But when I think about noise, I start thinking thinking about distorted pixels, and when you get to the point where the pixels actually start to change color and robbing you of the intent and the vibe of the image, then I, then I, we can talk about the image being unusable or definitely not representing what you had in mind when you made the photograph that I, we can definitely go into that. But because it shows a little bit of noise, that would be equivalent to some film grain, uh, totally usable, totally. Usable. And again, the, the images on the cell phone are just fantastic. I, I love them. They, they, they're usable. They're great. And, uh, I was glad to, to use that. Um, the Valley Bar. That's the show that I'm missing. Now that's the one. That's where I saw Bob Log the Third as well too, in Phoenix. Now that I remember, and uh, I don't have that those images somewhere, or they're they're probably inside another folder. I'm hoping. Uh, but we do. Uh, but yeah, like you say, I love Bob Log the Third. And again, when you get to the point where you're pushing film like I do, I really don't care about dynamic range so much as the vibe and the feel of the craziness of what it is to shoot Bob Log the Third. One of the things Bob Log the Third does, besides play awesome music, he's a one man band and he's got basically he plays bass and drum and hi hat with his feet and he plays guitar obviously with his hands. Uh and sometimes he'll play a banjo. He wears this crazy helmet that he can't really see out of. So one of the things you have to appreciate is that he plays guitar basically blind. And he plays these amazing riffs at fucking breakneck speed. And he's just going at it the entire time, keeping time and and keeping a beat with his feet. And it is amazing. Just the music alone is really cool. You're not really supposed to know what Bob Log III looks like. At least he doesn't make it known what he looks like. If you pay attention in the slideshow, you'll see what he looks like. There's a, you know, or what, you know, what his roadie looks like. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that's him. I'm just saying that, you know, pay close attention. And of course, he comes out wearing like this Elvis type jumpsuit. And he's got these couple of things where he, sometimes you'll bring a dancer on stage and they'll do crazy things. But I think more or less they ask if they can come on stage and dance. Uh, but he's got these songs called, uh, um, oh shit, one of them is called uh, Breast in My Scotch or Tit in My Scotch. And he'll ask a young lady to dip her nipple in the scotch and then you'll do a shot. 
every time you give him a drink, uh, he'll turn, you know, he'll cheers you and apologize for turning the back to the crowd. But he turns his back to the crowd and takes his drink, puts his helmet back on and, and turns back around. He's got this other song where he uh, puts girls on his lap. And if two girls come up, um, and actually I've seen him with guys come up too. He'll put one on each knee and he'll just start bouncing them around. And, uh, you know, it's hilarity ensues and it's great. And the whole time he's uh, playing his guitar and going nuts and he's bouncing these chicks off of his uh, uh, off of his knees. He'll bring balloons. He'll ask you to blow them up and step on them and pass them all over the crowd. And of course, if you've noticed, he's got that raft in the back. And one of the highlights of the show is that he tells the crowd that he's going to make him his ocean. And he will make his guitar wireless. He would, uh, he would, his guitar is wireless. You know, nowadays you plug into the whatever and you don't need a cord anymore. Uh, and he'll get on the raft and he will surf the crowd in the raft the entire time. Uh, doing his guitar thing and it is amazing and I think those are the pictures that I'm missing as well because uh, I have pictures of him doing that uh, he's he's just the amazing guy as far as his showmanship what he comes up with this craziness uh, one New Year's he I don't know if it was New Year's actually no it was my birthday uh, he played with a local band called the Batter Suitcases, which is an amazing band uh, as well. Very good rock and roll band. They uh, they opened for him, and in this this time he brought an inflatable uh, pool that he uh, filled with champagne and invited people to drink out of it. Or I don't know. I think he envisioned girls getting into it and. Uh, <laughs> Doing some sort of crazy uh, thing uh, on it. Yeah, it's at Chopper John's, and I think uh, I got I got pictures of him doing it. These photographs at Chopper John's are uh, those are taken with the uh, the Canon G15, and uh, uh, at the end, oh man, I didn't get the. Oh, I have video of it. Damn it, I should put video up on it. Uh, let me see if I can post up some of the video and. Uh, and have that on as well. What I wanted to do was basically make like a short little, uh, not necessarily an entire video of, uh, of any song that he has, but just use like 30 seconds to a minute of his video and put together a bunch of my photographs with his, uh, uh, with his music, which I thought I think would be really fucking cool. Uh, but yeah, I, I caught that stuff. It's on video. Uh, and, and man, it, it's really amazing. And I'm glad I shot it on video. I, I think I will put it up. Maybe I'll put up a snippet if I got some of that. Uh, anyways, that's more or less the pictures that I have here. And uh, when he drives a raft, I think he does it anywhere. I know that he the casball has got a relatively low ceiling compared to, like, say, oh, the Crescent Ballroom, which has got a huge vaulted ceiling. And uh, he even uh, rafted, surfed the crowd at the casball. Uh, he did it at uh, at Chopper John's too, which has a low ceiling, and he'll just get in it, and people will uh, surf him around the crowd, and man, it is amazing. And I'm missing a couple of those shots where I ha I do have great pictures of him surfing the crowd. Uh, you know, man, I, I fucking wish I could find him. Anyway, uh, that's more or less the Bob Logger third in a nutshell. His music is crazy. I love it. It's uh, he's on Fat Possum Records, obviously, which is uh, well, I don't know if it's obvious. You guys, you know, some of you might not know, uh, but he's on Fat Possum Records, which is the record company that released a lot of my favorite, uh, and that's how come I know about him. Uh, released some of my favorite bluesmen like R.L. Burnside, T. Model Ford, Junior Kimbro, uh, to name the A.C. Payton, uh, Fred. Uh, You'll you'll know who I'm talking about in a second, and of course Adele Davis. Uh, these uh, these guys are I love them. They are uh, great bluesmen. They're they're from the Mississippi Hill Country, so it's not your typical type of blues. And they again, Bob Log the Third is on their record label, and it is 
oh man, it is crazy, but it is good music, and it really is amazing how much sound one man can put out. All right, if you guys got any questions about the photography here or anything else, uh, leave me some comments and or emails, and I will uh, get back and try to answer as much as I can about these. And even as far as technical in the process of what I do when I uh, uh, pro- process the film and push the film and shit like that. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great night and enjoy your youth. Thank you so much, nice lady. I really appreciate this. Phoenix 